Hey, it's Adam Hansen here, and we're gonna do a quick video on Dead Spot Score. Now, the last video we did, pelvic node, the last video was actually the Tux, so I have to mention Tux Galaxy Rollers, I, my impressions of it, I really enjoyed it, I like it. So click uh, here. <laughs> Uh, to have a look at it, uh, and I must address something. I had a competition. The person who could guess the longest I could ride with an average of 0.0, 0.0 dead spot score would win a set of rollers from Tux, these exact Galaxy ones. Um, and I have to admit, I think you guys had very low confidence in me, and there was one person, and it was Brandon Glasser, 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 Glasser. You got it right. Well, you didn't get it right, but you got three seconds off. So, uh, just some background. The best I've ever done was one hour with 0.0 on my left leg and 0.1 on my right leg. But the competition was 0, 0 on both legs. I found another file where it was 40 minutes. I also did the exact same. And in this file, I found a section where I had exactly 0 0.0, 0, 0, 0 for 37 minutes and 30 seconds. And Brandon guessed 37 minutes and 33 seconds. So, write to me on hansino.com in the contact form, give me your address, and I'll order you a set of Galaxy Tux rollers. And because of coronavirus times, I'm doing a huge cleanup and I'm finding heaps of stuff I uh, just want to give away and get rid of. So I, I found this jersey. It's Amiga Pharma Lotto, back in 2011. Uh, so if you want to win this, hang around to the end. You must subscribe. Please subscribe. And, uh, and yeah, I'll announce the competition towards the end so you can win this jersey. So, dead spot scores. What is it and how does Limo measure it? So, these are the sensors from Limo. And there's five sensors in the, the five pack because now they've released a running pack where there's only two sensors in the running pack. But the cycling pack, there's five. And we place one of these sensors, the blue lights, getting ready to pair, on your beautiful shoe. And to measure dead spot, so a little background on the sensor. The sensor has a gyroscope and an accelerometer. Now, accelerometer is not used for the dead spot score. It's only the gyroscope. The gyroscope bases on the X axis, which is this axis here. So you have X, Y, a Z, and gyro measures this rotation on the X, uh, this rotation on the Y, and this rotation on the Z. So when the sensor's here, what the dead spot score is measures, and this is important to know because I've done a lot of seminars and presentations where I've asked the question that, yeah, but if you're not pedaling, if you're not applying force, then it's okay to have a dead spot because your muscles are getting uh, a rest period and, and you shouldn't always be applying power. If you believe that, that's fine. I also think that, but that's not how Limo measures the dead spot score. So based on the zero X value, which is in this direction, it measures measures the change in the gyroscope and it can see how stable your foot is and what Limo detects is is the change that's not what you want to do you want to push down fluidly and come up you don't want this instability problem you don't want this instability there you can actually monitor it while you're riding and it actually shows you live on the Limo head unit this is the type s uh, so while you're riding, you get to see both of the circles of your cadences. You get to see where the Limo or DSS score is and the magnitude of it. So you get an idea and you can focus it and you can train it. And I think this is something very important because what a lot of riders do that I see is they get lazy with their technique and they're training bad habits. And this is something that you don't want to do. You don't want to train bad habits. I've always found that on the rest days in the Grand Tours, when you're just doing the coffee shop rides, you're just getting through the days and you're just doing like uh, active recovery sessions. Session. The chain tension is, is slacking a bit and you go off on and you hear the, the you know that clunky sound You're actually teaching yourself bad habits and this is something that you should avoid even every training session You do you should always train good because runners for example Runners do so much technique dual training so they're as efficient as possible in cycling We don't do this at all And I think it's very important to be conscious of this and you get to see it real time on the limo and on the type S Now if you watch the pelvic angle vlog I did I gave a little bit of background on limo's online app now on this file here particular I had a problem with my seat and I changed my seat in uh, if I look Geelong <laughs> and the good thing about the limo this is it so I had this with me and I could try different positions and I could see what was best for me so I had a new different seat and what you have to remember is when you're changing seat seats have different stack height from the rail to the top so it's not just throw a different seat on 
Throwing a different seat on means you've got to actually change the seat height. And dead spot scores, they change dramatically when you change seat height. Almost every single file I've seen, when you go too high or you go higher, your dead spot scores get worse. And when you go lower, it gets better. Now that does not mean you should just put your seat lower to get a better dead spot. You can train your dead spot score on the Limo very easily. It's just something you've got to be conscious of and aware of. And you can also look at your FAR. And if you see there's a difference in your FAR, so that's the difference between the, the maximum and the minimum. If one foot has a higher range than the other foot and you have a bad dead spot score on that foot, then there's too much movement in that foot and you should try and keep them the same and symmetrical. I always believe you should be as symmetrical as possible on the bike and the more symmetrical you are, all the values get better, especially the dead spot score. So I did a few tests and in this test, I was just checking the leg angle range because for me, I want to keep the exact same leg angle range as possible. And I monitor this by using the pelvic rock and pelvic rotation. So the pelvic rock is moving this way and the pelvic rotation is this way. And if you go too high, then you have too much pelvic rock. My method and my strategy is always start off with big jumps. And then you get to see very big changes in the numbers and you can see which direction to go. I'm not biased in any way. No, I shouldn't say that. I am biased on the position, but I test every position. And because of this, what I do is I do like a, a grid testing. I'll start, if my, if my position's here, I'll test every position higher, every position lower, every position forwards, and every position back. And I'll do it at all angles. So I go higher, forwards, back, lower, forwards, back, and also on the baseline, forwards, back. I might just do nine, or I might do 25. So 25 means five different measurements up and five across at every single level. And from that grid, if I do big jumps, like in this file here, two and a half centimeters per step, then it's very clear which direction I should go in because the numbers are very different from each other. And then I go into that direction and then I do the exact same test again and I do it much smaller. So I might only do two millimeters up, higher, lower. And then I can just go smaller and smaller to find the best position for me. And this way, you're not biased. You're actually following what the data says. So in this simple test here, like I said, I did a bit of a warm up because I did a case study where I did a bunch of riders. I, I just looked at the first five minutes of the dead spot score in the training and the last five minutes of the dead spot score in their training. And every single rider improved in the last part of the file. It is muscle memory. It's something you can train, it's something you can focus on. And because of this, I always encourage people to warm up. I know Thomas DeGent never does a warm up before his time trials, but you do get more efficient if you warm up. Just by pedaling muscle memory, you will improve your efficiency. Now there's also a graph called the PSI. The PSI shows exactly where you have the dead spot, at what power, and at what cadence. So it's, it's actually pretty interesting because you can see generally like in this section here, this is all the different cadence ranges. And if I just focus on what is normal for me, what I ride out, which is between, yeah, let's say 85 to 100 is normal. I usually have my dead spot score around the, the 5.30 to 6 o'clock, but mostly around the 6 o'clock. But the lower cadence, I have dead spots all over in this particular file. Okay, so I hope that was a nice, short, sweet uh, video on dead spot score, how the sensors work, how it works on your shoes, um, and how it shows on the Type S, uh, and also how to win the Omega Pharma 2011 jersey is, in the video I said, what are the things I look at when I'm increasing the saddle height, because that is going to be the next vlog. So please let me know on the Liam Mills metric that I use to monitor my seat height and what it should be. And I will do a, um, yeah, just a random test how I did it with the uh, Sally Talia saddle that I gave away. So thanks guys, stay safe, and I hope it's all good. Take care.